The Sisters Grimm podcast is intended for mature audiences only. Please listen at your own discretion. Blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. The most notorious serial killer in the nation, the Night Stalker. The Boston Strangler. The Son of Sam. The infamous Zodiac Killer. What's your favorite scary movie? Chucky, wanna play? Ah! Get away from her, you bitch! Welcome to the Sisters Grimm Podcast. How'd you do this? Show you. Show you. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Sisters Grimm Podcast. I'm Morgan. And I'm Holly. And if Morgan's intro sounded a little warped there at the beginning, it's because we're doing this remotely again. We sure are. I am in Chicago. Holly is in Ottawa. We are about 90 miles apart. Yeah, if you if you give a shit about, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so today, as you all know... Oh, we're... also we should say the reason that this is coming out a little late is because uh, Holly didn't have electricity for the last few days. Right. That is very true. Um old we mom and dad have a very old house the like wires were like fucked up it's really boring but yeah no we didn't have any power well we did technically have power we had it in certain rooms like i said this isn't interesting so right. this episode y'all is about the brothers grim stories we haven't done one of these motherfuckers in a long yeah. time we did it in march so like at the beginning of quarantine <laughs> Um, that makes sense. It feels longer because 2020 has actually been 10 years. Yeah, no, it's like 84 years long. Yeah, so this is our seventh run of the Brothers Grimm stories, which if you haven't listened to one of those episodes before, is our namesake. They are German brothers from what, the 1700s? <laughs> 18? I, I don't know. 20 BC? <laughs> And um, their names are Wilhelm, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, and you know that's where our name is from. So we like to honor them by telling their weird fairy tales, <laughs> right? Because their stories are fucking weird. Some of them are just weird. Um, and I felt like we had uh, hit a wall where there were no like creepy ones left. But oh, that ain't true. Too. But that ain't true because. I know all four. I know the two that you're reading also are pretty fucked. I mean, they're weird. I'm going to tell you right now that I didn't read them previous because I want my own genuine reaction to reading them. Um, Live? The well, that's a good way to have not written notes. Exactly, Holly. But are they are they really long? Yeah. Um. Cool. I mean, how much notes do you have on them? Not a lot, but probably less than it takes to read a story. But who cares? We'll, we're both doing it two different ways. You're getting you up like the times in which these took place. Like what notes do you? Have? I'm summarizing. Like if I were giving a book report at school, but oh, no, it's cool. I'm not. No, I like. I was actually thinking that um, before. Um, people will get an understanding for how these are written because sometimes the wording in these is weird. That's usually all I've done. <laughs> Right. I will we yeah, do things summarize. I just give them the full um sip, if you will. Okay. Well then how about Holly's afraid I'm of not it. worried. And Morgan gets and Morgan doesn't like it when they're over an hour and a half. Isn't that true? I was happy with uh I'm glad the thirty one was like two hours. That's fine. I oh. love that. Right. So since you are like telling the stories, how about we end on yours? Okay, work. So that means I will go first. Sounds good. Okay. So Tell let's... us what your first story is. Yeah, let's just fucking get right into it. So my first story is called The Three Snake Leaves. Um, Mor have you? did you not look up the German names for these? Morgan's nope. face. I mean, you don't have to. I was just curious. I should know snake in German. You know. You should know snake in German. Schlange. Schlange? 
really schlong Do you think that's where they got schlong for dick? Because it's a snake? It, yes. Okay, so the three schlong leaves. <laughs> uh, they're dry schlong Yeah. Cute. So, there was basically this poor family... And the son decided he was going to leave to go make some money. His dad was, like, really, really sad. And the son ended up joining the king's army. And during a battle, and during a a battle, like, everyone, like, retreated, basically. They, like, ran away, except for him. And so the king was like, you are a badass. Thank you so much. Here is all of these treasures. I don't know what treasures would have been back then. I'm guessing just, like, different gold things. Honestly, I'm thinking gold, frankincense, and myrrh, if I'm being completely honest with you. I don't know what treasures would be back then. More like milk, eggs, and butter. Probably. So Like bread. Exactly. So, um, he probably also would have offered this young man his daughter, but uh, she was a little quirky. She had high standards when it came to men and said she would only marry someone who agreed to the condition that if she were to die first, they had to be buried alive with her. Hmm. Um, she was like, if he loves me, he'll do it. So she was like very beautiful, but like this thing that she had with her spouse being buried alive with her was a little off-putting to some men. Um, right. But this son who are the who was in the army like simped so hard for her he was like fucking yeah dude let's go for it i don't care so they got married he's now called the young king and okay. she's the queen and everything is going great but then she got really sick and no doctor could save her and she died and then the young king was like oh no i totally fucking forgot the main Wait. I forgot what our relationship hinges on. Um, <clears throat> so he tried to escape, but they were like, uh-uh, you know the rule. So he got buried in this like mausoleum burial thing with the now dead queen. Um, huh. But they weren't complete assholes. They left him four loaves of bread and four bottles of wine. And then when that ran out, he would die. <laughs> huh. So they let so him... Like- we're living in this hole for like a week and a half. Right. If, yeah, I would be like, I'm good. So like he was eating like sparingly, like trying to really make it last. And one day, um, he was like sitting on the ground and he looked in the corner and this um snake like slid out and he approached the queen's body and the king like thought it was going to, like, bite her or something. I don't know. And he was like, no, fuck that. And so he cut the snake up into three pieces. And then a second snake came out. And he saw his dead friend. He went back to the corner to get something. And he brought back three green leaves in its mouth. <laughs> All of this hmm. just sounds really funny to me. Just a snake <laughs> seeing his friend being like, oh, shit. Going back and then coming out with leaves. Um, so he put... a leaf on each piece of the dead snake and it came back to life and then the two snakes slithered off and they left the leaves behind (laughs) so then the young king was like i've got an idea and he put the leaves on his dead wife she came back to life and was like oh god where the fuck am i and the young king was like it's cool baby i brought you back to life with these leaves and so they like started yelling and pounding on this like tomb so that they could get out and Eventually, um, they opened the door and the king was like, oh my god, hey! (laughs) Um, And so the king took the leaves and he gave them to his servant and was like, watch after these. Um, So the young king wanted to go back to his family and like visit his father and like be like, hey, remember when we were poor? I'm a king now. Um, So they got uh, the king, young king and the queen got on a ship to go visit his father. But the queen, like, ever since she, like, came back from the dead, she, like, lost all love she had for her husband. And so when they're on the boat, she's like, I don't want to be with this dude anymore. So with the help of a skipper, they, like, threw the young king overboard while he was sleeping. And the queen was like, we'll just say that he died on the way. And when we get back, you and I are going to get married. So the young king's servant... um 
who was like the keeper of the leaves, remember, he saw all of this. And so he got in a little boat and he like went down and got the young king, put the leaves on him. He came back to life. And so the old king and so they go back to the kingdom and they beat the queen there and tell the old king everything that happened. And so then the new queen come or yeah, the young queen comes back. And the king is like, I know what you did, bitch. And so she, like, begged for mercy. And he was like, nope. And so they put them in a boat with holes in it. And they were sent out to sea where they died amid the waves. It missed. It missed. Amid. Yeah. <clears throat> That's some shit, Holly. I know, right? That was weird. Not necessarily scary, but definitely, like... I mean, Weird. it's. Gr- I mean, it's totally oh. grim. She wanted her spouse buried alive with her. Yeah, for sureies, for sureies. All right. I hate that. It kind of reminds me of um, one of the like scary stories to tell in the dark. I feel like has a similar kind of story to it that maybe they kind of ripped off of that slightly. Uh, the brothers Grimm ripped off scary stories. <laughs> the opposite (laughs) right i mean uh maybe not ripped off but like as an homage true all right so let's get to your first story all right so i'm doing the juniper tree um i'm also looking up how to say it in german it is shout out to juniper walk holder bomb what their walk holder bomb cute I'm guessing. Is balm tree? I think so, yeah. And then walk holder must be juniper. Because, like, I'm like, oh, Tannenbaum? Oh, Christmas yeah, tree? Oh. oh, my God. Absolutely, Holly. <laughs> oh, my God. LOL. I'm so smart. <laughs> okay. So here's the gig, sis. Long ago, at least 2,000 years. And oh. this was back then, so this shit's old. So the um, year was... 20? So the year 20. Yeah, the year 2. No, 20. Um, there, was a rich, there was a rich man who had a beautiful and pious wife. Pious? I think and that means she was, like, good and pure. Love that. Okay. And they loved each other dearly. However, they had no children, which back then meant not great. <laughs> well, they wished very much to have some, and the woman prayed for them day and night, and they didn't get any, and they didn't get any. <laughs> it Literally. Says it it well, says it twice. They got uh, some because they were trying. This right. re- sounds like the story of Abraham and Sarah. I Keep going. Um, in front of their house. Oh, by the way. Were- just to correct myself, pious means devoutly religious. So she was a very religious woman. For sure. So in front of their house was a courtyard where there stood a juniper tree. One day in winter, the woman was standing beneath it, peeling herself an apple. And while she was thus peeling the apple, she cut her finger. Ouch. And the blood fell into the snow, which everyone knows means shit's about to fucking go down. You know what I mean? Oh, no. When earth takes on your blood, it's usually not like a good thing. Never let your blood fall on the earth. Right. Oh, said the woman. <laughs> she saw looked at the blood before her and was most unhappy if only i had a child as red as blood and as white as snow and as she said that she became quite content content and felt that it was going to happen why wouldn't she you know right then i feel like we did this one maybe what I said, I'm not that I'm hearing this. I feel like we may have done this one, but keep going. I do not remember this shit at all. Okay. Uh, when she went into the house, so then she went into the house. A month went by, and the snow was gone. And two months, and everything was green. And three months, and all the flowers came out of the earth. And four months, all the trees in the woods grew thicker and the green branches were all entwined in one another and the birds sang into the woods resounded and the blossoms fell from the trees and then the fifth month passed 
cool. And she sat beneath the juniper tree, which smelled so sweet that her heart jumped for joy and she fell on her knees and was beside herself. And when the six month was over, the fruit was thick and large. Gross. That sounds disgusting. She was quite still. And after the seventh month, she picked the juniper berries and ate them greedily. And then she grew sick and sorrowful. So it's been a whole, this is, this sounds like 2020 for me. You know what I mean? So she wow. ate these bear. she ate the berries and got uh, clinical depression. She got sick and also sad. So sick and sad. Much. So then the eighth month passed and she called her husband to her and cried. And she said, if I die, then bury me beneath the juniper tree. Then she was quite comforted and happy until the next month was over. And then she had a child as white as snow and as red as blood. And when she saw it, she was so happy that she died. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so happy that she died. It was partially how you read that. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know oh why that's god. so funny. Anyways, <sighs> her husband buried her beneath the juniper tree and he began to cry bitterly. <laughs> After some time, he was more at ease and although he still cried, he could bear it. And sometime after, he took another wife. You know what I'm saying? He then had a daughter. So what happened to the kid? The red and white one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened one? to the blood kid? Yeah. Who so was... He had a... Yeah. So he had a daughter by the second wife. But the first wife's child was a little son. Okay. Little blood son. Little and blood he boy. he was as red as blood and as white as snow. We get it. <laughs> When the woman looked at her daughter, she loved her very much. But then she looked at the little boy and it pierced her heart, for she thought that he would always stand in her way. And she was always thinking how she could get the entire inheritance for her daughter. And the evil one filled her mind with this until she grew very angry with the little boy. And she pushed him one corner to the other and slapped him here and cuffed him there. Ew. So the poor one was af always afraid. When he came home from school, there was nowhere he could find any peace. So she basically beat him, it sounds like, which is like fucked up. I feel bad for the red and white boy. Also, school? This is the year 20. What kind of school? Oh, right, some kind of schooling. He was learning how to, I don't know. So one day, the woman had gone upstairs to her room, and when her little daughter came up to and said, Mother, give me an apple, she said, Yes, my child, and gave her a beautiful apple out of the chest. This sounds very Snow White to me. It sounds um, Snow White to me. It's giving me Adam and Eve vibes. Yeah, but there's no schlonga. Uh, no the schlonga. chest had a large, heavy lid with a sharp iron lock mother said the little daughter is brother not have one too this made oh wait, hang on i lost my place this made the woman angry but she said yes when he comes home from school when from the window she saw him coming it was <laughs> as though the evil one came over her so like and satan apple and took it away from her daughter saying you shall not have one before your brother okay, okay. Yeah, a lot's happening here. Okay, so she threw the apple into the chest and she shut it. Then the little boy came into the door and the evil one made her... Okay, so she has like a... Is she possessed? Evil, right. So the evil one made her say to him kindly, my son, do you want an apple? And she looked at him fiercely. <laughs> fiercely. Mother, said the little boy, how angry you look. Yes, give me an apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. this story is wild. Then it seemed to her as if she had to persuade him. Come with me, she said, opening the lid of the chest. Take out an apple for yourself. And while the little boy was leaning over, the evil one prompted her and crash! She slammed down the lid 
his head flew off, oh, uh, flying among the apples. Oh God, that's a fucking visual for you. Oh, little, little red head, little boy. Yeah. Was his head wow. so red he looked like an apple? Um, I guess. Then fear overcame her, and she thought, maybe I can get out of this. <laughs> All right, let's try. So she went upstairs to her room to her chest of drawers and took a white scarf out of the top drawer and set it, uh, set the head on the neck again. What? Okay. Tied the scarf around it so that nothing could be seen. What oh. happened to her? Okay, so Whoa, she. Oh, I'm a little boy. Yeah, no, she was like trying to make it seem like no, he's he he's okay. Holy shit! Okay, that's fucked up. Put him on a chair in front of the door and put the apple in his hand. Creepy. This reminds Holy me shit. of the house that Jack built. After this, Marlene came into the kitchen. I think that's the little girl. We're just now learning her name is Marlene. Cool. Um, so Marlene came into the kitchen uh, to her mother, who was standing by the fire with a pot of water, before hot water, before her, which was stirring around and around. Okay. Mother said, Marlene, brother is sitting at the door and he looks totally white and has an apple in his hand. Weird. I asked him to give me the apple, but he didn't answer me and I was very frightened. <laughs> Go back to him, said her mother. The mom's so fucked up. And if he will not answer you, then box his ears? I think that means punch him in the head. Okay. So Marlene went to him and said, Brother, give me the apple. But he was silent, so she gave him one on the ear. Punched and him. his head fell off. Right. Marlene was terrified <laughs> and began crying and screaming. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Imagine being a little kid and thinking that you just punched your brother's head off. Right. Oh no! She went to her mother and said, "Oh mother, I have knocked my brother's head off." <laughs> and could not be comforted. I wouldn't be able to either. Said the mother, "What have you done? <laughs> Quiet! Don't let anyone know about it. It cannot be helped now. We will cook him into stew." Ew, gross! Wow, huh. that's nasty. <clears throat> then the mother took the little boy and chopped him into pieces, put him into the pot, and cooked him into stew. But Marlene stood by crying and crying, and all of her tears fell into the pot, so they didn't need salt. Ew! Ew. I hate Gross that. that I've ever heard of. Then the father came home and sat down at the table and said, where is my son? And the mother served him up a large dish of stew, and Marlene cried. Couldn't stop. Then the father said again, where is my son? Oh, said the mother, he's gone across the country to his mother's great uncle. He's staying there for a while. Jesus. What is he doing there? He did not even say goodbye to me, oh, said the oh. mother. Dad, oh, he wanted to go and ask me if he could stay six weeks. He will be well taken care of there. Oh, said the man, I am unhappy. It isn't <laughs> right. He should have said goodbye to me. With that, he began to eat, saying, Marlene, why are you crying? Your brother will certainly come back. Then he said, wife, this food is delicious. Give me some more. Oh. And the more he ate, the more he wanted. And he said, give me more. You two shall have none of it. It seems to me as if it were all mine. And he ate and he ate, throwing all the bones under the table until he had finished it. He ate the entirety of the soup, all of Marlene's tears, all of his son. Uh, that's so fucking disgusting. Marlene went to her chest of drawers, took her best silk scarf from the bottom drawer and gathered all the bones from beneath the table and tied them up in her s silk scarf, then carried them outside the door, crying tears of blood. She then Obviously. laid down beneath the juniper tree on the green grass, and after she had put them there, she suddenly felt better and didn't cry anymore. <laughs> then the juniper tree began to move. The branches moved apart, then moved together again, just as if someone were rejoicing and clapping its hands. At the same time, a mist seemed to rise from the tree, and in the center of the mist, it burned like a fire. And a beautiful bird flew out of the fire, singing magnificently, and it threw high into the air. And when it was gone, the juniper tree was just as it had been before. And the cloth with the bones was no longer there, 
Marlene, however, was as happy and content as if her brother were still alive, and she went merrily into the house, sat down at the table, and ate, which I'm assuming she ate her brother, but I don't know. That's fucked up. Um, Here's more. <clears throat> then the brother blew away and lit on a goldsmith's house and began to sing. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. My sister, Marlene, gathered all my bones, tied them in a silken scarf, laid them beneath the juniper tree. Tweet, tweet. What a beautiful bird I am. What the fuck? The goldsmith was sitting in his workshop making a golden chain when he heard the birds sitting on the roof and singing the song. He thought it was beautiful. He stood up, but as he crossed the threshold, he lost one of his slippers. Oh. However, he went right up the middle of the street with only one slipper and one sock, and he had his leather apron on, and in one hand he had a gold chain, and in the other he had the tongs, and the sun was shining brightly on the street. He walked onward and stood still, and there's a lot just about the bird, basically. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to get into it. It's right. a lot. Right. It's a lot with the bird. Basically, um, yeah. I get that. So that's basically it? It's basically it, yeah. There's just some more singing, uh, and then the guy's just kind of like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah, I, th I realized that I was, um, during the, uh, Morgan and I took a little second, and I was thinking that maybe I would read my second, but it's long, and there's a lot of, like, repetitive shit like that, too, so I'm just going to read my notes, but maybe I'll just read them a little more lively. All right. Yeah, I like telling a story, you know? Right, right. So um, anyway, that was the juniper tree, y'all, or Dare Walk Holder Bomb. Yeah, hate that. That, that. hate the mom. She's that was really probably good. one of the most disgusting ones we've ever That's pretty done. That's gross. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Hating mm -hmm. it. So, uh, I thought we were going to do all of yours and then all of mine, but I think we forgot. But anyways, are, do you want to go now? Yeah. No, That's. I was thinking back and forth. LOL. So, my next story is The Goose Girl. Oh. There was an old queen, and her husband had been dead for many years, but she had a very beautiful daughter. And when the daughter was old enough to marry, um, the queen sent her away to a distant kingdom to meet her new husband. But the queen also sent with her a handmaiden, and they traveled by horse. And the princess's horse, Falada, could talk. <laughs> Work. Um, so the day the princess left, the queen um, put her fingers um, or cut her fingers and took out a small white cloth and let three drops of blood fall on it. Then she gave it to her daughter and was like, hold on to this. It will help you in the future. So after traveling a while, the princess became very thirsty and she asked her handmaid to what well, she told the handmaiden um, to get her a cup of water from a nearby stream. But the handmaid was basically like, do it yourself. I'm not your servant. So the princess was like, Ugh. but she was so thirsty. So she, without her cup, drank from the water with like her hands. Okay. Um, so the cloth uh, spoke to her. The, the cloth that her mom had bled on obviously spoke and said that if her mother had seen her doing this it would break her heart but the princess was humble so she was like whatever and she got back on Falada and they uh, kept going so again the handmaid was or again the princess was like I'm super thirsty and apparently she was so thirsty she completely forgot what happened the first time and asked her handmaid if she would get her some water the handmaid was like no and so the uh, princess was drinking from the stream, but this time she accidentally dropped the cloth into the water without noticing it. And losing her cloth, she became weak and powerless. And so the handmaiden ordered her to switch horses because she wanted to ride Falada. And she ordered the princess to switch clothes with her. And if the princess told anyone, she would kill her. She had to swear not to say anything. But Falada, who could talk, by the way, uh, saw everything and thought, okay, I'm going to remember this for later. So right. they got to the kingdom and the handmaiden met the prince. They got married, obviously. And she was like, hey, husband, um, I found this girl on my way here. And like, 
can she have some work? And then the king was like, yeah, totally. She can, like, tend to the geese with this little boy named Little Conrad. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) that's his name. Little Conrad. Little Conrad. So, the fake princess said to her new husband that she wanted Falada, the horse's head, cut off because Falada was really rude to her um, on their trip. So, So, she asked for this dude... Uh, called a knacker. I don't know what that is, but she ordered him to cut the horse's head off. Um, and as he was on his way, the um, real princess stopped him and gave him a piece of gold and told him that she knew this horse and um, asked him if he would nail the horse's head to a gateway that she passed every day so that she could see him at least one more time. And the knacker was like, yeah, you got it. And so he nailed the dead horse head to the gateway. So, not only could Falada talk when he was alive, but um, could also talk when he was dead. And he would talk to the real princess um, when she was, like, on the way to the field to go tend the geese with little Conrad. And it told her, um, it said a little poem, and it was basically like, if your mother saw you right now, it would break her heart. So, the real princess and little Conrad were tending to the geese. They're in this fear. And so she is like, stop doing that. And so she like said a little spell that made his hat fly away. So he would have to go chase after it. And then while he was chasing after his hat, she would put her hair in a braid. And when he would come back, he would be really mad because he wanted to steal pieces of her hair. So eventually little Conrad, that is, uh, told the king that he didn't want to work with her anymore because she made him angry. Um, the king was like, well, why, why are you so mad at her? And he's, or no, I'm sorry. The king, uh, follows, um, little Conrad and the princess and he hides in a bush and he sees like everything that happens. And afterwards he asks the real princess why she does that. And she was like, I can't tell you because I swore I wouldn't. And he was like, okay, if you can't tell me, tell this stove. Huh. So, the princess got in the stove and started explaining what happened. The king was just outside of the stove, and so he heard everything that happened. And so when she got out, he was like, I heard everything that you said. Um, Put on all of these royal clothes, and we're going to go fix this. So, then they found the prince and told them that he was married to an imposter, basically. And he was like, okay, cool, I'll marry this girl instead. And so they planned on having this really big feast to announce it. Um, so at the feast, on one side of the king is the real princess, and on the other side is the handmaid. She would be put inside of a barrel that is studded with nails, and then the barrel should be dragged or drug behind horses through town. And the king was like, all right, you said it, and we know what you did, so that's what's going to happen to you. And so she got stripped naked, put in a barrel with nails, and got dragged behind a horse. And then everyone else lived happily ever after. Oh, gee. <laughs> I know, right? I thought that was pretty fucked up. She sealed her own fate. She should have been like, yeah. they died of old age. <laughs> for sure, for, for sure. For sure. All right, so let's hit them with the last story, Marianne. All right, Holly. So this one is The Robber and the Bridegroom. Wait, what was your story called? The Goose Girl. Looking up what it means in German. Morgan's looking up what it means in German. Deutsch, Deutsch. Die ga, die gain, die gain the magd. Die gain the magd. <clears throat> nice. Cool. Nice. And then mine is um, the robber bridegroom. Bridegroom just means groom. The groom. <laughs> Uh, hang on. In German. <laughs> Morgan's looking up what it says in German. Der Rauber Braudigam. Der Rauber Braudigam. Totally. Der Rauber Braudigam. Okay, so here it is. Once upon a time, there was a miller who had a beautiful daughter. When I was reading this, it was just like, for some reason, I'd been watching a shit ton of TikToks. And so I was just like picturing some girl like explaining this being her life on TikTok. Oh my so, god. As I'm explaining it, if that 
Okay. Like it. I'll put okay. myself in that frame of mind right now. So he had a beautiful daughter. When she came of age, he wished that she was provided for and well married. But it's also obviously not written like, you know what I mean? Okay. I do. <laughs> He thought, if a respectable suitor comes and asks for her hand in marriage, I will give her to him. He, long afterward, so not long afterward, a suitor came who appeared to be very rich. And Ooh. because the miller could find no fault with him, he promised his daughter to him. The girl, however, did not like him as much as the bride should have liked her bridegroom. <laughs> Him, and whenever he saw, whenever she saw him or thought about him, she felt within her heart a sense of horror. <laughs> um, one time he said to her, you're engaged to marry me, but you never once paid me a visit. The girl replied, I don't know where your house is. <laughs> <laughs> the They're engaged. Out. And then the bridegroom said, my house is out in the dark woods. <laughs> That's cool. not scary. Creepy. Looking for a groom said, next Sunday, you must come out to me. I have already invited guests. I will make a trail of ashes so you can find your way through the woods. <laughs> I'd be like, no, do it a less creepy way, this please. awful. I'm not doing this. When Sunday came and it was time for the girl to start on her way, she became, or she became frightened. Although <laughs> she herself did not know exactly why. I think we know why. This is scary. Yeah. In order to mark the path, she filled both her pockets full of peas and lentils. Cute. Hungry. <laughs> at the end of the forest, there was a trail of ashes, which she followed. But at the very, uh, but at every step, she threw a couple of peas to the ground, to the left and to the right. She walked almost the whole way until she came to the middle of the woods where it was the darkest and there stood a solitary house. She did not like it because <laughs> it looked so dark and sinister. She went inside, but no one was there. It was totally quiet. Eeps. Suddenly a voice called out, turn back, turn back, you young bride. <laughs> you are in a murderer's house. Oh no. I looked up and saw that the voice came from a bird, which was hanging in a cage on the wall. That's horrifying. That is scary. Again, turn back, turn back. You young bride, you are in a murderer's house. LOL. Then the bride went from one room to another, walking through the whole house, but it was entirely empty, not a human soul to be found. Finally, she came to the cellar. You'd think you would leave after that happened. Yeah, no? that's like a big red flag. Unless it was a parrot, like, mimicking something, I would assume this bird was magical and telling me, like, leave. Exactly. <clears throat> Anyways, she walked through the whole house, but it was entirely empty, not a human soul. Finally, she came to the cellar. A very old woman was sitting there, shaking her head. Could you tell me, said the girl, if my bridegroom lives here? Oh, you poor child, replied the old woman. Where did you come from? You are in a murderer's den. Ah. You think you are a bride, soon to be married, but it is death that you will be marrying. Oh, shit. Look, they made me put a large kettle of water on the fire when they have captured you. They will chop you into pieces without mercy, cook you, and eat you. And they are cannibals. If I do not show you compassion and save you, you are doomed. What is up with all your stories and cannibalism? Yeah, damn, you can Wilhelm. Know all of the cannibal story. Cannibal. Cannibal. Yeah, these are very, yeah, they're intense. Okay. So with this, the old woman led her behind a large barrel where she could not be seen. Okay. Be quiet as a mouse, she said. Do not make a sound or move or all will be over with you. Tonight, when the robbers are asleep, we will escape. I have long waited for an opportunity. Okay, work. Get it. So, <clears throat> this had scarcely happened when the godless band came home. They were dragging with them another maiden. They were drunk and paid no attention to her screams and sobs. Oh Bro. my god. So oh. Just like going and grabbing ladies and bringing them here. I hate this. They gave her wine to drink, three glasses full, one glass of white, one glass of red, and one glass of yellow, which caused her a heart to break. Oh my god. God, I've never yeah, heard. It's red. Wine. These are for kids. It, what is yellow wine? Piss. <laughs> off her fine clothes, laid her on a table, chopped her beautiful body into pieces, and oh sprinkled salt on it. The poor bride behind the barrel trembled and shook. 
for she saw well what fate the robbers had planned for her for <laughs> she had just witnessed a crime yeah a real intense one. Oh, like jack the ripper style yeah so one of them noticed a gold ring on the murdered girl's finger because it did not come off easily he took an axe and chopped the finger off <clears throat> but it flew into the air and over the barrel falling right into the bride's lap gross the robber took a light and looked for it but could not find it then another one did you cook wait <clears throat> then another one uh did you look behind the large barrel the old woman cried out come and eat you can continue looking in the morning that finger won't run away from you lol the robber said the old woman is right they gave up their search and sat down to eat thank god <laughs> The old woman poured a sleeping potion into their wine so that what, they what, stood yellow? And laid down, I'm guessing. So mm. then they all laid down in the cellar and fell asleep. When the bride heard them snoring, she came out from behind the barrel and had to step over the sleepers for they lay all in rows on the ground. They were just all pissed like just asleep on the ground. Jeez. Passed out. Um, that yellow wine really gets you fucked up. Yeah, jeez. Is it just um, white wine with uh, cough syrup in it, maybe? Yeah. So she was afraid that she might awaken one of them, but God helped her, and she got through safely. The old woman went upstairs with her, opened the door, and they hurried out of the murderer's den as fast as they could. The wind had blown away the trail of ashes, but the peas and lentils had sprouted and grown up. Fuck and yeah. Them in the moonlight. They walked all night, arriving at the mill, and next morning, the girl told her father everything just as it had happened. When the wedding day came, the bridegroom appeared. The miller had invited all his relatives and acquaintances. As they sat at the table, each one was asked to tell something. The bride sat still and said nothing. Then the bridegroom said to the bride, Come, sweetheart, don't you know anything? Tell us something like the others have done. She answered, then I will tell them about a dream. I was walking alone through the woods when I finally came to a house. Inside there was not a single human soul, but on the wall there was a bird cage. In the bird cried out, turn back, turn back, you young bride. You are in a murderer's den. So basically she tells the tea of what happened. Right. Anyway, she says that, and with these words, she pulled out the finger and showed it to everyone who was there. Yuck. The robber who had during his story become as white as chalk, jumped up and tried to escape. But the guests held him fast and turned him over to the courts. Hell yeah, then bitch. The whole band were executed for their shameful deeds. What a true crime story. I was literally going to say, that was uh, the Grimm's, the Grimm brothers' little... Uh, that was like a true crime, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, Der Rauber. Oh, they actually say it, say it in German at the bottom of every cute. Really small one. Uh, well, that's really so that one, cool. Der Rauber Baumgang. That one that was, was it. that was fucked up. Yeah, yours were really fucked up. Bad. She like witnessed like a horrendous crime, and then this nice old lady saved her life. I like, know work. that literally. She's gonna write a book, and she's gonna be a new york times bestseller literally i mean i feel like i've watched a like cold case episode it's very similar to that wow yeah those were some crazy stories y'all how smart with the lentils and peas bitch because yeah that ash is just gonna whoop up into the you know i knew that was a bad idea the second he said it yeah wow anyways so that has been the episode, y'all. That's it, y'all. And, um, you know, we're happy. It's November, but it's basically December, which means Christmas is just around the corner, everybody. And so I'm telling everybody to go on Peacock and watch P2. P2? Oh, my God. I was wondering where you were going with that. Oh, I love it. Is on Peacock, and it's a great uh, horror film that you don't realize is a Christmas horror film, and it's great. Well, it then, I'm going to tell everybody to go on your streaming uh, device, download Tubi, and watch um, the Sonic the Hedgehog Christmas special. <laughs> is that good? It's not bad. 
Right. Okay. Well, work. Um, totally. We love that. We love you guys, and um, we love the Brothers Grimm, even though they're fucked up. You know. Gotta love people who are fucked up sometimes. Tuts.